Greetings, I'm Solidus Scully. There's a tournament being held at the Coliseum, and ladies and gentle ladies, this is the big one. We could just go to the final world and just say fuck it, but... Uh, well, there is a reason why you want to go back to the Olympus Coliseum. Not just for completion's sake, but in fact because... Well, the tournament we're about to face has a lot of goodies to be heralded, and again, it is well worth your time to... Well, basically go to this Colosseum tournament and basically get some high-level magic, some different abilities, and ostensibly just prove to everyone once and for all that we're the champs! And uh, also you get to kick Hades' ass, as you can see, pasted all over the board is the Hades Cup. Fifty fucking rounds of shit, bosses, and heartless. It's gonna be the big one, and tonight on WrestleMania, you will be there, or I will fucking shit, fuck, I don't know. Basically, you know how I had fuck all to say with the other rounds of the Olympus Coliseum? This is gonna be another one. Jesus Christ, it's gonna be as painful for me as it is for you, so bend over and relax the muscles and uh, I will prepare you for complete global saturation. Now to point out the differences between this round of the Olympus Coliseum compared to the previous ones, since uh, 50 rounds is quite possibly one of the most harrowing events ever, the game is lenient in the sense that basically, again, if you happen to die or you decide to quit out because you have something to do, again, you can basically start off from uh, the 10th round of each heat. So like, I mean, if you make it down to round 40, you can pretty much start from there if you decide to quit out and try again. And uh, vice versa when you go to 30 to 20 to 10, all that kind of stuff. So. It is lenient, you do get some pretty good shit for doing this, but uh, at the same time, showing all of this off is somewhat necessary, but at the same time, it's also gonna weigh you down if you're trying to do this all in one sitting, such as me, so... Blech. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy fighting Heartless. I suppose to kind of once again go back to that irrevocable talking point, such as the crowd not actually being there, uh, here's one thing I was also thinking of, really. Like, I mean, how the hell did Phil allow Heartless to enter the tournament? Are Heartless allowed to speak? Or was he just singing, you know what, we need some enemy fodder, so Heartless, get in there, you fucking abominations. Or did they threaten to rip his heart out if they didn't compete? For whatever reason. I mean, I suppose maybe the fact that the Colosseum is the best place to find heroes, and Heartless are attracted to strong and powerful hearts, so that's why they're working within the framework? I don't know, it just seems kind of odd that these animalistic Eldritch Abominations <coughs> like have the, uh, I don't know, sapience to agree to such things. No, uh, but I mean, I don't know, maybe uh, the Heartless have like a- actually, no, that kind of makes sense actually. Maybe Hades was the one who entered him into the competition uh, on their behalf since he was somewhat working for Maleficent, who isn't a thing anymore, which is uh, quite, quite bizarre actually. Um, well, uh, I guess maybe since his heart is belonging to darkness anyway, he has control over his heartless, so... Uh, fuck it, might as well use him to try and get Hercules, maybe? Well, uh, open a can of worms and there's another mystery yet to behold. This is the Red Truffle. Let's see if we can finally get our record up. Come on. One. A two. A three. A four. A five. A six. A seven. An eight. A nine. A 10, an 11, a 12, a 13, a 14, and by the way, that's how many tech points you're getting per hit, 15, 16 tech points. It's basically increasing in that amount. So uh, yeah, the more you hit it up, the more tech points you get, and uh, again, if you have an open space like this, the rewards you get are pretty freaking sweet. Well, I mean, at least if you're in desperate need of a level up, I mean, there are more efficient ways to grind as I pointed out earlier in Halloween Town with the, uh, the, the Halloween candy machine, as I call it, or whatever the fuck it's called. But, yeah. Uh, this is another way of doing it. Oh, well. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's hacky sack with a fucking mushroom. I mean, really, you could basically just hit it once and uh, call it a day, really. And now we have Yuffie, all on her own. Except now we have friends, so now we can, uh, well... Show her the pain. Actually, you know what, now that I think about it, and again, I'm probably brought this up time and time again, but... I still think that having a Colosseum-like tournament would be a good way to include some Final Fantasy characters. 
I mean, even if you don't want to give them any sort of story importance, you could still use them to, you know, I guess maybe give them like a little pre-conversation banter with Sora and just sort of have at it. I mean, I know games like Dissidia probably already fill the niche to have a fighting game between Final Fantasy characters, but... I don't know, like, I mean, it, the Olympus Coliseum just seems like a nice way to really include them in the game while... Uh, just having some unique boss battles. I, I don't know, maybe it would uh, be a little bit too worrying on the programmers to give them their, you know, game-specific movesets, or maybe it might have something to do with Tetsuya Nomura's personal rule on uh, not including characters that he himself didn't personally design, since... A lot of the ones, at least pre-Final Fantasy VI, were done by, um, Amano, I believe. Uh, but at the same time, though... Uh... I mean, he included Setzer in Kingdom Hearts 2, so... I really don't know. It seems to be a case-by-case -case basis, but... I don't know. I, th I just think it would be a decent idea to include them, and, you know... I mean, if you really wanted to get them out of the way for the sake of, you know, story shit... Ugh, whatever. Oh hell, you know what, if you really wanted to give them a cameo, put them in the fucking stands! Like, I mean, they could be the crowd cheering Sora on. At least it's something. Even if it's like a fucking billboarded 2D sprite, or... I don't know. Hell, you could even have the fucking Heartless be the crowd that is cheering Sora on because they're dark and evil and like violence and shit. You mean, isn't that one way to get a crowd there without, you know, straining the resources? I mean, you could still billboard them. Oh, by the way, the Behemoth, uh, with a different color scheme for some reason. That kind of reminds me of, like, um... Uh, like those, like, flame jackets that people wear. I don't know, I've always wanted one of those, actually. Uh, like, I said it before on the Matrix Path of Neo with the, uh, the flame jacket dude, but, like, I really want that guy's jacket, man, it's... sick. I believe there is also another variant of this that you also face in, uh, the last level of the game, so... Yeah, Behemoth gets all the love, baby. I don't know. It's at times like these where I do kind of wish we also had the summon Bahamut, maybe? I don't know. Some Final Fantasy summons I think would also be cool, but... Alas... We go without. And now it seems I've run out of things to say. Well, I suppose another thing to also bring up is that since we have 50 rounds of this shit... Yeah, the... The Colosseum does try and adapt that by changing to different times of the day to... I guess maybe give the illusion that a lot of time is passing while Sora's battling in here, so... I mean, it's something, but... Jeez, you're gonna be put through the ringer by the end of this, I'll say that much. Anyway, time for some trivia, because sweet, crispy Jesus with pineapple chunks in... Ugh, this is gonna take a while. And actually, one thing to bring up with um, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix specifically... Yeah, initially this game was... Again, I think there was two different projects that were gonna come up... Uh, between this and a uh, certain other thing, because I believe initially they were going to be porting days, uh, Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days to a HD collection, completely remastered and all, or development was going to go towards, you know, the HD remix of Kingdom Hearts 1. Ultimately it went to Kingdom Hearts 1, but there was a bit of a snafu in that, in the sense that they basically lost all the original data for Kingdom Hearts 1 and had to recreate the game from scratch. Which I suppose by that means that they uh, probably would have had to have done something similar to what Bluepoint Studios did in the case of, like, uh, the Ico and uh, Metal Gear Solid HD collections, where they get a retail copy of the game and reverse engineer that. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what to say. Like, I mean, a similar case did actually happen with the Silent Hill HD collection. Whereas instead of getting a retail copy of that game and reverse engineering it, they basically took, like, a beta build that was heavily buggy and, uh, well, basically added a lot more glitches than they solved when uh, putting that to the PS3 and Xbox 360, so, uh... Hmm. Probably for the best that, uh... They got the data where they could. Although, there is also one specific difference between, uh... Some of the models here, because it says, um... Uh, from what I'm reading over here, is that apparently Sora's model and, uh, the one for Ansem's Secret of Darkness was taken from, uh, Dream Drop Distance, which, at the time, was the most recent Kingdom Hearts game that was, uh, available. But it's kind of weird, like, I mean, looking at Sora's model here, it looks like they took his model from, a. Uh, uh, Rechain of Memories, actually, the PS2 adaptation. But, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, it's really subtle, like, the changes for Sora you can only really tell by the hair, because in Kingdom Hearts 1 specifically, his hair was a lot more brown, whereas, uh, I think in, um, Chain of Memories and, uh, Dream Drop Distance, they made it a little bit more lighter to, I guess, sort of give a bit of model continuity between his look here and his look in Kingdom Hearts 2. And, uh, as for Ransom, his, the only thing that really changed for him were his facial features, which were redesigned to look more like, um, spoilery characters. So, uh, yeah, I can't really say too much on that. 
Anyway, what we just fought before was the original edition of, uh, God Armor, so, uh, yeah, it's technically still in the game. As well as, uh, some of the initial color palettes for, um, Stealth Sneak as well, so... Yeah. Kinda weird that they didn't use the Redux model that they had for Funnel Mix, but... Ack. Fuck it. Like here, as you'll see the Stealth Sneak, um, come out of its camouflage mode, you'll see that it's a much, uh, darker color scheme than what it was, uh, when we fought it in Deep Jungle, so... Yeah. Also, no Clayton this time around, so, uh... Yeah, make it up what you will. I mean, really, this is, like, the ultimate, I guess, the boss rush mode, really. Except with enemies in the way. As well as a prelude to a few enemies we'll be facing in the final level as well, so, uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. Uh, but I mean, as for everything else related to Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, basically... At least the HD edition having to be rebuilt from scratch, uh... I don't know. It's, uh, it is what it is, I guess, but... Heck. I suppose they couldn't, uh, reassemble, like, a Japanese copy, because, again, Final Mix was initially only exclusive to Japan, and this is both for Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Because, uh, again, as I mentioned all the way back in Part 1, like, I mean, for the longest time, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix was, uh, a long sought after collector's edition for most Kingdom Hearts fans. Like, I mean... It contained, like, a lot of additional content that makes, uh, Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 a little bit more difficult to play these days, because you didn't have quite as much content to go through. A lot of the synthesis shit was cut down significantly. And, uh, well... Yeah. Again, that was sought after for so many years, but it wasn't until, uh, I think it was 2013, 2012, uh, where the Final Mix editions became available via, you know, PlayStation 3, and, uh, that's pretty much how we got the games. Which I suppose is, uh, something I can say I'm thankful for Small Mercies for in recent years, because, uh, again, Kingdom Hearts as a series was very sporadic in terms of the way in which it, uh, had its games released on several different systems, and basically you couldn't access them quite as easily, so... I mean, really. Thank goodness for HD collections. And now, we get to the Cerberus battle. He ain't softened up no more, so, uh, we gotta take this puppy for a walk, take it to the dog show. Devil May Cry 3, fucking taunting Cerberus. Yeah, that's pretty much all that this is. And, uh, yeah, as I promised earlier, yes, we're gonna be getting that sweet, sexy music. Mmm, it is indeed delicious, like spaghetti. But yeah, Cerberus' strategy is pretty much the same as it was before, just with the media health bar. And, uh, again, since we're pretty much now more pimped out with more abilities and, uh, well, glide to avoid those pu uh, the pillars over there, yeah, let's, uh, show this doggy. Uh, what's boss? Fetch. Bitch. Or not bitch. Whatever your gender is. Did I just assume the dog is unmentionables? Possibly. Again, this little doggy ain't shit. Again, like, I mean, there's really not much to say. I mean... Hmm, that's pretty much all she wrote, really. Anyway, we're taking this doggy to the pound. Knick-knack, paddywhack, give the dog a bone. This old bitch came rolling home. Anyways, onwards to new adventures. That's the power of the Keyblade, and for our troubles, we get Thundogger! So, like, I mean, again, it's a system that kind of rewards itself, really. You get more powerful magics, we got Blizzaga, we got Thundogar. And, uh, yeah, as you can possibly tell, each heat is kind of capped off with a little bit of a boss fight to test our metal. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Now comes the point where I need to find things to say about Heartless who's slain time and time again. Uh, because, I mean, we do get some uh, significant encounters here and there. Like, I mean, we'll have uh, a couple of, like, I think Cloud and Leon are coming up next. Sorry, Cloud and Squall. Fuck. Stupid Kingdom Hearts. Renaming characters that shouldn't be renamed. I mean, to go back to my earlier point, like, I mean, if you're gonna go to this whole trouble of renaming Squall into Leon, like, whether for the sake of making it easier to pronounce, or for the sake of, like, having some sort of, like, pseudo-tragic, oh no, I lost my home to darkness and now I have to change my name to escape the shame, like, I mean, at least include something a little bit more substantial than that. I mean, to go into it a little bit more, like, I mean, initially in Birth by Sleep, you were gonna see, uh, Squall, Aerith, and Yuffie, but apparently they were cut for time. Ugh, I don't know, like, I mean, if you're gonna have something tragic, at least have it include, I, I don't know, maybe Alone, or, uh, 
I guess, Renoa. If you really wanted to add some tragedy to Squall, like, losing his homeland... I don't know. It's, uh, pish. And what you just saw there was the Zantetsuken in action. I mean, I suppose if I could actually comment about how far Sora's come throughout the past, uh, well, game really, like, I mean, by the time you start equipping some of the more powerful abilities and, you know, uh, additional Keyblade swipes, again, you really do feel like the boy has learned a lot throughout his journey, and again, like, that's reflected in his fighting style. We've come a long way since the 1-2-3, uh, sword combo, and it's... Well, again, it's really cool to see how far he comes, and again, to see him almost immediately lose all of that skill by the time he enters Castle Oblivion because of, uh, thanking Nomine. Oh my god, look at the dark ball. Now, that's actually kind of confusing. And, like, I mean, you have the original, uh, god armor, but, like, you don't have the same palette for opposite armor. So, I mean, they clearly could reuse the bosses that they already had in the game, but they kept the originals in for some reason. Well, I mean, I suppose what I said earlier, maybe they took uh, the original guard armor for that point in the game uh, from the original Kingdom Hearts, so maybe they didn't have the other one for opposite armor. Whatever, I'm just speculating here at this point. I really don't know why video game companies aren't more careful about, like, preserving their data, especially considering the vast amount of success that Kingdom Hearts already had. Like, I mean, was the data not formatted to modern computers, or was somebody just careless when uh, storing disks over at Squaresoft's headquarters? I don't know, like, I mean, it seems like the sort of thing where you would think that software companies would be a little bit more careful with that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, especially in this day and age of, like, you know, uh, you know, people leaking, like, uh, games before they come out, which is a lot more common now than it probably would have been back in the day, but... I don't know. Just seems like a bit careless to me. But then again, we are only human, and thus, we are flawed. Therefore, we must give our hearts to the darkness so that we can become evil and not flawed or something. <laughs> yes, indeed. Goofy, we have indeed done it, but we ain't did it yet because we still got several fucking minutes to commentate on. Another 13, I believe, at this point. Ugh, oh, Christ. Actually, you know what? I'm kind of curious, um, if they could, maybe could have rejigged some of the... Again, this is just sort of me thinking out loud here, because, like, I mean, I don't think we've had a Colosseum thing since, uh... Not since Coded, actually. So I'm kind of curious, like, I mean, if Kingdom Hearts is going to bring back this concept again, uh, maybe they could kind of rejig it in a similar fashion to, uh, maybe what Ratchet and Clank series had with, you know, Annihilation Nation, or maybe, like, a little bit of Dreadzone, like, maybe have a few platforming challenges, you know, to account for the fact that we have the flow motion system and whatever, or maybe have, like, some sort of, like, color commentary going on as Sora, you know, battles his way through, and again, reactionary commentary comes depending on how much damage you take and how much you suck, uh, compared to, you know, how much you kick us and you know, how well you do in the arena battles. I don't know, like, I mean, a just slight change in the way the mechanics work, I think, could easily make a lot more depth in the game mode. And, I mean, like, uh, having arena battles and all that kind of stuff is a pretty cheap and easy way to pad out the content, in a way where if the primary gameplay loop is fun enough to sustain itself, like Kingdom Hearts hack and slash gameplay usually is, then, uh, I don't know, maybe that might be the right sort of way to really sort of rejig everything. I mean, I don't know, like, I mean, it is a little bit Pavlovian to say that Kingdom Hearts does kind of overuse the Colosseum motif uh, throughout a vast majority of its games, but at the same time, like, I mean, if it's going to be a standard gameplay mode, then why not go all out with it and just give it a few nice little touches here and there? I mean, it couldn't hurt. And of course, we got my favorite Keyblade in the entire game, Lionheart. And, uh, again, maybe it's just my inner Final Fantasy VIII fanboy just talking here, but... Again, I really like the Keyblade strength, I like the way it looks, and... On honest to god, it is... legitimately fun. It is kind of designed in the style of a Gunblade, but... <laughs> it's just cool, man. <clears throat> I mean, uh, I guess that's also something to bring up while we're just... fucking around here, really. Is that, uh, in terms of what Funimix also added, it was uh, a few additional Keyblades that we are going to be seeing... Actually, in the next video, really, so, uh, stay tuned. But yeah, these, uh, the Keyblades that we're gonna be getting soon aren't, weren't included in the original game, but... Alas, uh, for Final Mix we get them, and, uh, well, they are also pretty damn sweet. I didn't really find myself using them, obviously, but... Again, I will at least show off what they look like, uh, 
And I will be showing one off in particular in the most ill-fitting environment possible because... Uh, Teehee Hoddle Ha. And of course, we're starting to see some new Heartless. The Angel Heartless. Which, uh, hmm, spoiler alert. Because, uh, they come for the final level. And again, that's also something we'll be continuing to see, uh, coming up soon, to a DVD near you. Oh, except for this one. Yeah, apparently they also have, like, Heartless the Divide or some shit, because uh, we have Dark Ball question mark, which either means it works for the Riddler, or it's just gonna rain Dark Balls, hallelujah, until you're pretty much fucking sick to death of them. Ah, eh, Quish, at least you get the bloody experience points. It's <laughs> another thing I'm also thinking of, actually, uh, in terms of the... Uh, no, I'm not really thinking of anything. I'm just padding out for time, because Jesus Christ, can we fucking get on with this shit? Yes, indeed, sir, it is the power of the Keyblade. I was about to call it the cower of the P-Blade. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. Like, I mean, really, I think this mode probably could have been salvaged if maybe if it was a legitimate boss rush. Like, I mean, just either have it against some of the more powerful Heartless in the game, or have it against the uh, boss-specific enemies and just have you gradually make your way towards Hades, because, uh, well, I guess to give a little bit of a spoiler here, Hades is not the final uh, opponent we face. Again, if you remember back to the list, he was pretty much in round 10, so, uh, yeah, we do have a few more... Uh, rounds to go before we get to what is bizarrely the number one spot, which uh, is a little bit disappointing, but has to be seen to be believed, because I kind of feel like they should have reordered this. And again, as I mentioned earlier, probably should have been more of a boss rush, rather than a tedious slog against the Heartless just for the sake of padding things out. Because, like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh, playing through this, but, like, I mean, it is just a cheap means of extending the Olympus Coliseum to breaking point. Again, this isn't the final stuff we have to do here. There are two additional rounds that are gonna show themselves on top of this, and even in that case, if you wanted to pad out content, you could have had the boss rush be, you know, uh, Sora with his friends, Sora alone, and again, the time attack like we've had for all the other rounds at this point, so... Was it really necessary to have us fight enemies that we've pretty much been creaming this entire game? Uh, yes, Goofy, in fact, it is bad, because it's padding, and we don't like that, unless we get into a car accident, and we lose our memories, or our parents, or a girlfriend. From then on, we decide to become a car avenger, smashing cars and smashing faces. Come on, Angel Dust, die. Whew, thank God I can take a break. James Woods, take it from here. Yo, hey, how you doing, everybody? <laughs> yeah, got a minute? Hades, Lord of the Dead, nice to see you. Hey, guess what? I got a place for you. Oh my god! Hades is gonna take them down to Australia! Bo -bo -bo -bam. Oh, secret Scully super boss in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Oh, by the way, a uh, fun bit of trivia, actually. I believe, um, I don't know if it was like an urban legend or not, but I believe James Woods actually recorded the Hey, how you doing? Hades, Lord of the Dead, nice to meet you. Uh, line when he was actually a bit tipsy when he uh, came to audition. So, uh, yeah. Which wouldn't surprise me in the least, but, uh, Hades. He is, uh, not one to take lightly. He is the Lord of the Dead, after all. And, uh, basically he has two states. Hothead, and, uh, slightly less hothead, because blue flames are hotter, aren't they? Basically, you're just gonna whack the shit out of him, use a lot of ice spells, and, uh, that's pretty much it, really. He does have some pretty explosive fire-based attacks, which, uh, especially when he does his little flamethrower twirly-whirlies and well, you know, legit flamethrower attacks. Best to kind of avoid him, but once he's finished with that, you can pretty much just wail on him. I mean, if you are much more lower level than you should be at this point in the game, then yeah, Hades is, uh, well, definitely the guy you gotta look out for, but... Again, by this stage in the game, you should be more than capable of meeting the challenge, except for when he does moves like that, in which case you have to run away! And again, that's, uh... Well, again, he'll float around the arena and basically just either go for ranged attacks with invisibility frames, like with Strike Raid here, or just uh, wail on him, really. But again, when he goes for his Feel the Heat, that's usually when he's about to unleash a damaging attack like this, so uh, 
avoid him. You can pretty much go under the flame pillars by dodge rolling. Again, seems a bit unlikely, but again, you do have the invincibility animation frames to kind of get under. In a similar manner to how you would dodge Kurt Zeezer's, uh spinning slice blades of death. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Kingdom Hearts had that just a touch of Disney magic. But I mean, like, uh, yeah. Comedy! Although, technically, shouldn't the round be over? We just beat the Lord of the Dead, who was kind of like opposing Phil to begin with. Why are we still fighting here? Why is their heart was still fighting? <clears throat> uh, well, that's the rules of the competition, I guess. But again, we've only got 10 more rounds of this shit. And uh, then I can finally have a drink. Come on. Final drink. Yeah, to talk about the uh, Invisibles, which is basically the giant sword wielding Heartless over there. But again, basically he will have his little invincibility state, he will basically plunge his sword into the ground and have like a... a dark flame aura surround you and basically you're gonna jump out of the way, otherwise you are getting, uh, well... kind of tag teamed in a similar manner to Virgil's, uh... energy swords from Devil May Cry, like where he'll kind of surround them around you and uh, you're gonna jump out of the way. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote in regards to the Invisibles. I'll probably talk more about them when we, uh, well, get to the final world. The last world of the game. Yeah, there really isn't much to say about the Heartless, except for the fact that I guess maybe it's a show that you're going further into the underworld. There are, like, these trees that seem to have been, uh, kind of, like, half cut down or whatever. They do reuse this boss arena for a certain encounter we'll be getting to next time, but uh... I don't know, is this meant to represent the Underworld's influence? I don't know, maybe we could die and find out for ourselves, and cross the river sticks, and pay him a coin, or push him into the river and take his boat, because we're jackasses like that. Yeah, also Stealth Sneak comes back for some reason. No idea why. Like, I mean, really, it just seems odd that he's come back. Uh, maybe he tagged in and out, or some shit, like a wrestling match. That means you'll see Stealth Sneak at WrestleMania 2021 or something. Yeah, uh, this is your chance to get some more arts, I guess, but really just... <laughs> really, I'm fucking tired of this shit, just fuck off. Die. Even though you're the most friendly heartless I've ever fucking seen, I just don't fucking care, just leave. You gotta go! Oh, Yeah, it is kinda cute that Donald throws out a little dedication to his lady out there. Something we should all do. But oh god, it's another one of these fucking divide and conquer shit. Just end already, you fools! <sighs> Could we just end this conflict before me tired bones devolve into dust? Like a little Irishman that I have no idea what the fuck I'm even doing that voice. I mean, there are also some, uh, Final Mix exclusive Heartless that you can see right at the end of the game, so... I guess either they wanted to say that for a secret surprise, but... I don't know, kind of surprised they didn't pat it out for content here. Like, I mean, they've... they pretty much, like, revealed the, um... Uh, the Angel Dust and the fucking... Uh... Invisible enemies here, so... What, man? Jesus Christ, how many f how many more of these fucking things are there? There's too many fucking stealth sneaks. Actually, you know what, if they were gonna pad out uh, boss content in the Colosseum, uh, why didn't they also include, like, uh, you know, some of the Funimix exclusive Heartless, like the, uh, like the Heartless that you have to, like, damage through giving it health, uh, like the demonic candy ball dispenser from, uh, Halloween Town? Like, I mean, really, if you were gonna try and add some new content into the game, why not do this, like, I mean, I know this game mode was in the original uh, 2002 release, but, like, you know, wouldn't adding some new enemies be a better alternative to them than just, like, showing Stealth Sneak four fucking times? Oh my god, fucking Riddler, man. Just end. <laughs> end my suffering. 
Seriously, man, Hades is gone. I'm pretty sure- Like, look at the time of the day, everybody's fucking gone home and gone to fucking sleep, you cunts. To just end! It's like watching a fucking telethon that you don't give a fuck about. Or the Olympics, some shit. When your fucking country's already fucking lost and you just want it to fucking end. Well, I mean, actually, I believe at the time of recording, the Paralympics is uh, still going strong, so, uh... Yeah. Depending on your preferences, enjoy that, I guess. Oh, even Maven, we still got a great deal of... stuff. Ugh, but it should be coming to an end quite soon. What? Ah, uh, second seed. Almost done, but we have another riddle around, which means they divide and conquer, and... It just makes you want to say, Right, conquer. A punt to throw on with you. And now I feel in the mood to play Conker's Bad Fur Day again. Uh, emulated, obviously, but... Fuck, I just feel in the mood, man. Even though that game's controls have aged like cheese, especially the, uh... It's War chapter. But that's not related to anything Kingdom Hearts related. Well, I guess except for the fact that, uh... Conker's Bad Fur Day had a lot of, like, cross Nintendo stuff, like... I believe if you look in the main menu of that game, you can actually see, like, the corpses of Banjo-Kazooie. And I think there was also, like, an initial scene where, like, um... Uh, Don Weasel also beats the shit out of Pikachu, so, uh, yeah. A lot of changes made to that game. Ugh, oh, please be the end of my fucking suffering. So much darkness, can't see. It's also kind of weird that they have, like, um, heartless enemies based on angels. It's, uh, well, I mean, not entirely uncommon considering it's, you know, Japan, Evangelion, all that kind of shit, but... This seems kind of odd. And now we get to the final, final boss of this Hades Cup. Also one of the more bizarre enemies to face here. Yeah, the Rock Titan. Um, shouldn't this have been before Hades? Anyway, you get to fight this boss again in Kingdom Hearts 3 and it is so much better there than it is here. For one thing, it's much bigger in scale. And uh, here you're basically trying to make uh, the Rock Titan weak at the knees and just aiming for the head. Like, I mean, climb up the monster's body and, uh, go to town. I mean, you get tech points, but, like, I mean, fuck, it's going down in no time flat. And bear in mind, we're still using the Kingdom Key D, so, uh... No, not the Kingdom Key D, that's a completely different one entirely. The Kingdom Key, so, uh... Yeah, if Sora can do it with this one, so can you. I mean... That's, uh, pretty much it. We're finally done. Thank... Fuckity goodness. Even Maven, that was a uh, pain in the buttocks. Anyway, let's check our rewards. We finally got Trinity Do Limit, which uh, is fucking amazing. And on that note, I am Solid of Scully, keep a new medal. And uh, I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, catch you dudes and do that next time. Bye bye.